President Cyril Ramaphosa has taken over responsibility for state security and appointed an expert panel led by former safety and security minister Sidney Mufumadi. The aim of the panel will be to strengthen the country's ability to safeguard the security and integrity of the nation. For more reaction on the president's move, I'm joined by strategy and international affairs expert David Africa. Very good morning to you, David. Thank you so much for your time. Um, we saw the president uh, bringing the security cluster a lot closer, saying that it's being done in other countries and it's nothing new. Was this expected? Hi, David. Uh, uh, can you still hear me? Was the president's move expected? You can. Okay. Hi. Uh, good morning. Um, it, it seems that uh, many commentators were, were caught by surprise, uh, particularly by the shift of, uh, you know, or actually the dissolution of the ministry and shifting the responsibility uh, for state security into the presidency. Obviously, there was an expectation that there would be a reshuffling of the ministry itself, uh, but, but the, the, the move of intelligence into the presidency obviously is a significant move. And, um, you know, it was unexpected, largely. Um, some people or many people have been arguing for it for, for some time. And I think that uh, we will have to see how things play out. You know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a complex institution that's being moved into the presidency. And there are obviously uh, potential advantages and risks uh, to, to that particular move. So, um, so, so uh, we, we'll have to see how it plays out, basically. Mm -hmm. The, the president also signaled the depth of his disappointment in the manner in which uh, the, the security in South Africa um, failed to manage the rioting and the chaos and the looting that we saw playing out in Gauteng and KwaZulu-Natal. And uh, in what transpired yesterday, Police Minister Begi gets to keep his job while uh, Nosibuwa Mapisa Ngakula is given the boot and then replaced by uh, Tandi Mudise, who also leaves a vacant and important position. What do you make of that uh, move? Um, you, you know, I think that um, there's a problem with the sort of personalization of, uh, of these challenges that we have. It's not about um, necessarily this minister or that minister having underperformed or being responsible for uh, for let's call this an intelligence failure or shortcomings. There are very deep institutional challenges that we confront and that has led to the inability of the, um, of the services to, to, to detect in time and, and with sufficient detail uh, the, the events of, of recent weeks and to respond to, to it. Um, so you, you know, the, the, the problem we have is that there is a personalization of these challenges. Often, you know, it, it, it is personalized in the form of a minister or a director general. And on the flip side of that, you, there is the idea that if we just change the personnel, uh, our problems will magically disappear. And, and uh, that is obviously a, um, an approach that doesn't build sustainable solutions to, to these uh, challenges that are really very systemic challenges. It's about what the strategic orientation of the national security community is. You know, to what extent does it uh, understand the nature of new politics, new warfare, new forms of information warfare? Um, to what extent is it embedded in the right places with the right technology? Um, and to what extent does it capacitate its personnel to be able to respond and understand, you know, the, the, the context in which we live. And this goes beyond saying moving Minister X from here to there and replacing him or her with someone else uh, is, is going to solve the problem. And what are the problems? Because looking at the state of affairs, 
when it comes to the domestic and foreign intelligence services within the state security agency when it comes to leadership i mean you, you mentioned on one side that um you know it's almost like waving a magic wand and uh, expecting our problems to magically disappear when there are leadership challenges within that need some sort of direction? I think the first and, and almost the most fundamental problem is that we need to design a national security strategy that is fit for the modern world in which we live and in which we will be living over the next 20, 30 years. Um, the, the institutions that we have and the approaches that we have, the training that we provide to our national security professionals is largely based on an assessment of the world that existed, you know, 15, 20 years ago. There's been a transformation, actually a revolution in international politics, global uh, politics, global security and warfare. And this affects uh, you know, the very purpose of intelligence. So I think the, the, the first challenge really is, is to, to come up with a strategy that speaks to our contemporary reality. Um, on the basis of that, one then constructs institutions. And on the basis of that, you deploy people who can lead uh, these institutions. You know, so the question of leadership, uh, you know, is, is something that, that comes uh, following a, 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 a modern uh, and a contextually relevant strategy. Otherwise, you appoint people with, this, with very high level of skills, potentially, but skills that are not suited for the task, really, that they are confronted with. And this is one of the, the problems we see, that often you, we try to figure out why a competent person, you know, a, a, a civil servant or a minister, um, s fails to, to deliver in a certain portfolio. And often it's the misalignment of strategy with institution and leadership. And I think, to me, that is where we, we need to go. Now, the president made a very bold announcement yesterday. One will have to see over time, you know, the effectiveness and the correctness of the decision. Um, but I think if these changes are taken together with a, a, a very significant strategic reorientation, which is necessary, then we could see effectiveness coming out of these changes. Otherwise, you are just shifting the problem from the ministry to the presidency. And when it comes to the, the actual move, I mean, many have described it as, as a power move with the president now taking responsibility for, for security. And looking back at, uh, at perhaps the history books and the lessons that have been learned from other countries in terms of bringing security closer and right under the nose of, of the main leadership, is that in, in terms of, of, of the history and what we've learned from other countries a wise move? Um, I, I think, look, there, there are different models of uh, how to do intelligence and where to place it, right? One model is the model that the president has now announced yesterday, which is to locate it in the presidency. It, it doesn't become more efficient merely by virtue of being in the presidency or by virtue of being independent as a ministry. There are a whole range of other complex factors that need to be present uh, in order for it to, to work. Any model has risks attached to it. The risk of increased politicization is there, obviously, because you are now sitting with intelligence uh, reporting directly in the presidency. Uh, and it, 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 it is now an issue for the president and the presidency to manage. How do we optimize the relocation of this institution without either politicizing it in the, in the narrow sense of politicizing or being seen to do so. And these are risks that obviously one would imagine have been considered and, and, and despite that they, 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 you know, the decision was made. There are obviously advantages to it. The president is the premier client of the intelligence service in South Africa. And it might be that, uh, you know, by bringing the agency into the presidency, 
that the relationship between its client and the agency would would run smoother and that there would be a better appreciation within the agency of what the requirements of the president as the primary client is. Um, but, you know, as I said, there, there are other things that need to be in place to make the model work. Absolutely. Thank you so much uh, for your time. Let's uh, leave it there for now. Some analysis when it comes to uh, security and the moves that we saw in the state security portfolio from President Cyril Ramaphosa. David Africa, strategy and international affairs expert, joining us and weighing in on that topic.